Hello guys, welcome back. Massive thanks to all of you for the recent support. My little tutorial about the Phrygian scale, disguised as a tech house video, has done really well. <laughs> and by far the most common question on that video was about drums. To which I normally reply, it's just about ear training and experience. It's not what you use, it's why you chose to use what you use. <laughs> So instead, I'm going to be showing you what to listen out for with what I call the five pillars of groove. Placement, accent, shape, tone, and roll. Let's go. Okay, so what you're listening to here, believe it or not, is a house beat. At least, it is on paper. Doesn't quite sound like one yet, does it? But we will get there. I'm playing it alongside the Chris Lake style bass. The bass is going to come into play later. For those of you brand new to this, let's go over the basics. Here is our kick, commonly known as the four on the floor. One kick on every fourth. The claps go on two and four. And we have some hi-hats on eighth notes, eight hi-hats. Nice and simple. So we're going to do a little groove experiment. Groove is all about feel. Every time we make a change, I want you to pay attention to how it makes you feel. So placement, it's not just about its absolute grid position like this. Not the most housey groove, is it? <laughs> no, what I'm talking about is a lot more nuanced than that. Once I was working with a hip hop producer and they asked me to move the claps back by a few milliseconds, to which I thought, what difference would that make? But then when you hear it happen, it completely changes the feel. So your clap or snare is sometimes referred to as your backbeat. And what we're doing here would be called pulling the backbeat. Pulling it behind the beat. Hear how that relaxes the groove a little bit? We can also go the other way. is pushing the backbeat. A different groove again. Has a little more urgency to it. Compared to more laid back. And that's not just a MIDI thing. You can be listening out for this in your loops. It's very common. And if you look at the full length of our sample here, I chopped the beginning off because it was already delayed. we're back to having a pulled backbeat. So even though the MIDI is on grid, this clap is playing late because it takes a while to build up. We could also use that to our advantage and use that build up to push the backbeat. That's why you'll see this term on some samples, pre-shifted. It means there's some build up to the main body of the sample, i.e. the transient, so you can pre-shift it so it lands differently. So pulling and pushing the backbeat. Start listening out for that, whether you're making your own or searching loops. Let's play around with some hi-hat placements. You can just have them on the offbeat every other eighth. Or we can have them on the third and fourth of every 16. Or every 16th. This placement can be nuanced as well, because if we pull every other 16th hi-hat, this is what swing 
Isso. So that percentage you see on your swing, that's just how far right every other 16th is moved. So 16th swing is when every other 16th is moved. You'll see if my groove only has eighth notes, then 16th swing changes nothing. But if we have something in the groove that uses 16ths, like this shaker part, now this will respond to swing changes. And if you're wondering, do my other elements have to swing too? Ideally, yes. Let's swing our bass here. In fact, let's go with a different bass, one more percussive. Now, hopefully you can hear, if the bass is straight, i.e. not swung, then our drums work best when they are straight too. Let's make it a little more obvious by putting these 16 hi-hats in. So you can see when the drums swing, the bass has to go with it too, and vice versa. So whether you're making your own grooves or searching loops, pay attention to placement, be it backbeat pull or push, or amount of swing. Very important for getting our groove locked in. Okay, let's look at accents. So the next thing we need to be listening out for is accent. In other words, what part of the groove is highlighted? So for example here, we could accent our backbeat. So we lean heavier on that two and four. Or we can do the opposite and pull that back so we drive with the kick. So the kick is now the accent, the main focus. The backbeat is still there, it's just no longer the accent. Hi-hats are a great example. Let me reduce the ones on the kicks. And emphasize the offbeat. So now we have a different groove again. And if you look at what we did with the shaker sample here, this is a typical pattern where we start soft, accent on the offbeat, back down on the fourth one and repeat. So be listening out for accent in your grooves. Now here we've just been playing with volumes, but there are other ways we can affect the accent. We can look at the shape of the sound. By shape, I mean things like the length and the attack of the sound. So one easy example is we can extend the length of our clap by adding reverb, okay? So in groove terms, this is similar to just turning up the clap. We've added an accent to the backbeat. Another simple example could be opening the hi-hats. So if we open the hi-hats just on the offbeats, we get a different accent and therefore groove.
suppose you could think about this like note length for drums. You may have heard me mention in other tutorials the importance of note length, be it on piano, bass. It's just as important on drums. And shape doesn't just have to be length. What we were doing to the clap earlier, changing the initial buildup of that sample, that's a shape thing too, right? Let's see what happens when we lengthen the kick drum. Not very appropriate for this particular bass line. But the groove has certainly changed. Let's mute the bass so we can hear the change in feel. Here we go. Hopefully you'll agree that changes the groove. Different accent, different feel. Speaking of shapes, by the way, these hi-hats are actually the same hi-hat, just on a different envelope. As you can see, this hi-hat is still the open hi-hat. Just on a shorter envelope, shorter shape. Okay, so we're listening out for placement, accent, shape. Now let's move on to tone. Right, now comes the fun bit, tone. In other words, the sound of the drum. I'm not going to sit here and pretend the sound of the drum does not matter. Of course it does. But now when we're auditioning different sounds, hopefully we will have an ear for their shape and how that affects our accent. And we can be listening for effects on placement and therefore how it's affecting our groove. Just like we saw with our clap earlier, not all claps are going to have that buildup and not all hi-hats are going to be the same length and shape either. And now if we take into account the tone of the drum, we find things like brighter or harsher claps affect our backbeat more than soft or dull claps do. So all of these things together are what we need to be listening out for when we're auditioning new sounds or loops. Now, when I did the Tech House video on West End, Mao P, etc., for speed and convenience reasons, most of those drums were shared between all of the examples. But because I had the references there, it was quite clear to see which drums needed to be swapped or altered in order to match the groove of the original. So, let me take you through some of those drum changes and decisions. These drums so far were just chosen so I could demonstrate the first principles. So this is going to be an ear shock. Here's the original drums from the West End and Noizu. So what's changed? Massive hi-hat accent. And the backbeat is important. Backbeat is slightly late. But the clap shape is short, so that's keeping the groove quite tight. And that works with our tight, short bass. Let's see what happens when we put a long clap on, shall we? Very different groove. Hopefully you're getting the idea. Now when we change sounds, we can hear which parts of the groove it's affecting. We check the Dom Dollar reference. What changed? We have a different kick drum, slightly longer hi-hat. Listen to these two kick drums. The new one is much neater than the other one. So this one gives us a more stomping groove. And this is tighter. Now this isn't a battle of right or wrong. They just give different grooves. So this one was nearer the reference. And I think a reason you might choose this tighter kick over this one 
to let the bass through more. This bass is rather soft. If you listen to the shape, it doesn't have that tom-like punch of this one. Hear how that one has lots of attack? So the heavier attack kick works here. Those two bounce nicely together. Whereas the tighter kick is letting the softer bass through a lot more. Let's listen to some more. So what changes here? We have different shakers. The shakers are now driving the groove and a smaller hi-hat that's taking more of a back seat now. Here's the other one. Our clap is also smaller. Same clap, shorter envelope, different shape. Let's put the old clap in. See how that changed the backbeat accent? much tighter groove. Again, neither are wrong, it just depends on the aesthetic flavour you're going for. So for the Fred again, we're back to the stompy kick, very large hi-hats. In fact, this is the same drums as the West End and Noisy reference. The main difference is we have extra length on the hi-hats now, added by a ride symbol. Let's see how crucial that is. Definitely contributing to a lot of pace and energy. common for tracks to add a ride symbol to pick up the pace of either the second half of the drop or the second drop and you can see why but regardless of where you need it the ride symbol is a great way of accenting your hi-hat now for Chris Lake See, we're back down to the neater kick drum. This is the old. Again, we need to let those low, subtle bass notes through. Back to the bigger clap. A lot of shaker drive, but a very short hi-hat. the old one. The biggest difference being a percussion loop. Because without it, it just didn't sound like begging. Very different vibe. A great example of the importance of percussion sometimes. almost as if that bass line needs the percussion loop to bounce off. Now this loop isn't even that close to the original, but the vibe is there. And what a difference it makes. Speaking of important percussion, the Biscuits track, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, relies on this tom groove. Is without it. All bounce gone because we have none in the bass. Now this was an audio loop I grabbed. Let me show you that as MIDI.
So as you can hear, even though the tone is different, we've got the bounce back. Let's turn that down. Let's take some high frequencies off. And there we go. We're back in the same ballpark. Doesn't have to be the same sample. Once you develop that ear for placement, accent, shape, tone, we can get the vibe we need. And last but not least, what makes this groove work? First of all, the kick has changed again. This is what I call a thumper. Lots of chest thump. Here's the old kick. And the other key element is this double hi-hat accent on the offbeat. Listen to how that changes the pace of the bass without it. Massive change to the groove without that. That brings us neatly onto rolls. Let's turn you down. By role, I mean what role does this part play in the groove? For example, this extra hi-hat in the Medusa remix. Is it core to the groove? Absolutely. It has a driving role. In fact, all the hi-hats do. In fact, let me swap out the other hi-hat for a short one. Hopefully you can hear the offbeat hi-hat accent just disappears, and that was core to the groove. Whereas if I remove this shaker, not so important. The shaker's role in this groove is more of an aesthetic one. It's bringing some brightness to the whole loop. Maybe a little bit of pace, but it's more about aesthetics than it is groove. Now, to be clear, I'm only talking about this case of this track. In some cases, shakers absolutely make the groove. So that's what I mean by roll. Understanding the role of each part in the track. Is it there for artistic decoration? Just added details? Or is it actually core to the groove? Okie dokie. That's about all my current thoughts. Exhausted. Placement, accent, shape, tone, roll. As always, I hope you learned something. If you did, you know what to do. Press some of the buttons that help me out. If you really want to help me out, there's a link in the description to buy me a coffee. Leave me any comments and questions. I will get back to you very shortly. And until I think of a sign-off slogan, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.